Good evening, Eric. That's a bright shirt. Yeah, it's uh, it's summertime. Gotta be vibrant. Gotta maximize my potential energy. Yeah, this new shirt will put me in a, a more serious state. Trying to destroy everyone. Okay, so I have Puzzle Rush lined up. It's been a while since I've done a Puzzle Rush. I think I'll keep doing Puzzle Rush as long as I pass my previous score. So, so let's click play, and here we go. Okay, a lot of these are mates in one, or pushing pawns. What is this one? Checkmate. 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 It's a fork. Check. And mate. few options here. I could take with queen or bishop. I think I'd take with bishop. And then win the queen. Typical mate. Uh, what is this one? Little bit of hesitation. Oops. No. I have to slow down. So if I take probably this move. No. This move looked good, but I guess what's wrong with it? Okay. 27. Kind of crumbled there. Had a lot of time to work with. Okay, who can help solve this in chat? Queen g7. Oh, wow. Queen g7. Oh, no, my. Oh, no, my queen sacrifice. That's nice. Yeah, the rook and knight coordinate really nicely. Check and we win the rook. So I missed two other ones. I think here I play g4, but am I just supposed to? No. I guess it requires calculation. Oh, do I push the f pawn? Push, push. F, f5 take, f4 take, f3. Yeah, I just pushed the F pawn. It looks like this is faster, but it's one, two, three, four, Hello, five, six. Eric. And this is one, two, three, four, five. So tempo is very important too. Welcome back to Harley Quinn Grizzlyson. Happy 19. Yeah, we do have the prediction ongoing. Um, in just a moment, I'll... I'll probably look at the the current state of the prediction. Emberg tried the stalemate trap, but it didn't work. Yeah, it has maybe um it doesn't have a perfect hundred percent success rate. But it will work sometimes. What's a QGD? That question wasn't directed at me, but QGD stands for Queen's Gambit Declined. As opposed to QGA, which is Queen's Gambit Accepted. Yeah, the course is still in progress. It's not just on the QGD, though. It's basically a whole repertoire against D4. I might try and accelerate like the release time, but it's it takes a ton of work to actually prepare the files and the videos. So um, let's try and beat 27. Did I look at all of them? 
Oh, what was this one? I think I took, because I was calculating takes and then takes, but that's just a trade. So here it's another queen sack, because it's force mates. Okay. Anyway, uh, okay, so Title Tuesday starts in now less than 30 minutes. Caden Troff has signed up. Um, I'm the 21st seed. I assume there's going to be more people that will enter who are higher rated. So let's play again. And here we go. So a lot of this is about getting through the first like easier ones and then saving time for the harder ones. Four traps a queen. Salu Eric. Hello. Okay, approaching twenty seven. First, free knight. Oh. Have you ever raged about losing a chess game you maybe should have won? Not recently. Um, take. This. Eric, you know I love you. I love you too. What is this one? One take with a rook, but then queen d5? Oh, rook d1. Uh, okay, it's mating that. Not seeing it. Oh, now I see it. Color am I? Ah, one more move. It may have been a few more moves though. What to do? Forty-one, better than the previous one. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you, the Moderna Athena, or the Moderna Moderna Athena. Yeah, generally there's not so much reason to rage. Thank you, Finite Earth. Oh, thanks for the love. Will it include ways to play out the course online? The plan is to include video lessons in PGN files. Today, YouTube randomly recommended your video Oh, in which I play Drofts. Yeah, shout out to leedrofts.org, I think. 
but it's L I drops, not uh, not L E E drops. Title of Tuesday starts now in twenty less than twenty five minutes. Hey, I got to forty one in honor of forty one, Matt. So, um, let's look at the one that I got wrong. Because I think I played this. I was getting low on time. Ah, uh, it just takes. It's actually nice. It takes, and then regardless of what takes back, I'll fork the king and the rook. So if pawn takes, there's queen f3. And if uh, queen takes, there's queen h5. Okay. So now the goal is to beat 41. Oh, Llama Corndog got your first Stafford the other day. Hope hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. Yeah, if I don't beat 41, then I'll, I'll play a warm-up game. If I beat 41, I keep going. F2. Black. What's happening here? Queen F7? Wow, that's crazy. Checkmate. Queen, what was this one? Takes. Not seeing it. Takes and wow. Black. That's so confusing. No. On Bassant. Checkmate. No. What was this last one? Uh, let me turn on the heart room monitor. I got to 42. Let's go. Meaning of life. I took some time on this uh, second to last one. Had to find queen f6. Okay, heart is beating. I mean, it seems like white, or uh, it seems like black has to deliver a check of some sort. Oh, it's this. I I saw this briefly and then rejected it because queen takes, but then queen a one checkmate. 
And the beautiful thing about this move is we set up the discovery. So after takes, however white checks us, there's um, like either queen move runs into rook c8, blocking the check with a check and winning the queen. And we're also threatening maiden one. Nice one. The other ones. Oh yeah, well, I get this one wrong. It's takes and then takes. Oh, I played queen d3, thinking I'm winning the knight, but I'm not winning the knight because knight e4 blocks a check and defends a rook. So it's just king takes rook. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, this one was super confusing because it's deep into the end game and I kind of forgot what color I am and which way the pawns were going. I mean, white's king looks very vulnerable. I took the bishop, but that, I guess, runs into some issues. Queen c8. So Chad is welcome to help here. Black to move. Pawns are going this way. White's pawn is about to queen. I guess it's about addressing this threat. Do we just check? Pinning the bishop and running away. This might be a move. Although, I mean, white will queen. Hmm. Like, what are the candidate moves even? Maybe we do just check. And then, like, if bishop moves, we check and get some initiative. King moves. I really don't see too many other options. Rook to the opposite flank. Ah, uh, rook here. That move didn't cross my mind, but I think it runs into this. Get the notation here. Oh, that should be better. Queen c5 clean. And then check. I mean, process of elimination, have to check. And again, I think there's only one check. Ah, the king will move here and then check, and eventually the king will have to go to the, the eighth rank. It keeps going. It's crazy that all these moves are like basically only moves. King here and then check and win the queen. Oh, it's Shwarma who was asking for the cat name. You ended up naming your cat Gambit. That's a nice name. Yeah, it was um, earlier. I, I was trying to remember who was asking for the, the cat name. Okay. Um, well, let's keep going. So I started with 27. Then I got to 41. And I just got to 42. So as long as I keep improving... And keep rushing. Okay. Trap the queen somehow, like rook a4. I like it. That's a nice one. A4. 
free queen. Meat. 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 Almost on passant meat. On passant check and then meat. Take with knight. Check, check. What's this one? Oh, check, check. No, oh, I was not expecting queen d6. Plenty of time, though. The rook b7, it's probably rook b7 first. I could like rook h8 for some reason. Ugh. Okay, got to 44. I keep improving. Let's go. Okay. Wow. Uh, so, I might not be able to play a warm up game if I keep improving on my previous score. Uh, let's check. Oh, so this one, I just I didn't anticipate queen d6. I found the idea of check and check, and then I just, I didn't really pre-move because you can't pre-move in Puzzle Rush, but I uh, instinctively took the rook, had to take the queen. And then this one, oh yeah, this one I kind of just guessed. So it's check and then check. So the other option is to check here, here, and then here, here. Wait. Where's the meat? Oh, it's just um, queen f7 and then bishop f5. And then check and meet. Okay. Our puzzle rushes 99% find a check. I wouldn't say 99%. And there's a lot of positions where there's multiple checks and you have to find the right one. Like this one. I mean, I found a check, but then eventually I, I found the wrong check. Okay, I still have time. Um, it's going to be harder to beat 44, but I'll try and continue the upward trend. Let's uh let's go again. Six traps a queen. Also, have, no, rookie eight doesn't work. Oh, what is this one? Take off seven.
No. Okay, check. Oh, wow. That was so tricky. No. No! Ah. I saw this and king moves any to these squares, or is this move winning the rook? But there's king g3. So what's the move here? Black can win this? It's a... No, it can't be that move. Oh, we trapped the rook. Ah. Okay, what to do? <laughs> That's a cool, uh, a cool trap. Don't see this pattern every day in the end game. And then, yeah, what was wrong with this one? Oh, king rocks up to f5. Because I was calculating, oops, I was calculating um, king e6 check, king goes back and mates. I didn't realize a king can walk up further. So, oh, it's, wait. And it probably has to be this move. King e6, bishop c4, king f5, and then queen e4 maze. Yeah, sometimes you have to see the whole variation before you play the first move. At some point, he'll get a higher score than his pulse. That would be very difficult. I'm not sure if it's a matter of getting my heart rate lower or my puzzle rush score higher. I think it would be very difficult to like even get a 50 puzzle rush score while keeping my heart rates at 50 or below. <laughs> Basically have to be sleeping for that. Josfer Pope says, hey, Eric is orange. Actually, Josfer Pope's, at least the way it appears in chat. Look at this. How do I do it? Like, if you look at this shade of orange compared to my shirt, it's very, uh, it's very similar. It's a nice color. Welcome back to Pam and Irene and Turnip Swagger. I appreciate all the shirt compliments. It's super comfortable, too. Why did you shave your, or why did you shave the beard? I really miss it. Um... Well, if you saw my YouTube video, I explained Let's go. what grows on your face in Vegas must stay in Vegas. Thank you, Jim Jam J. Or Jim Jam Jam J. So, I don't know. I don't think I have time for a warm up game. But hopefully, the puzzle rush allowed me to warm up and close all these tabs. All the previous puzzles. Let me refresh this. Okay, got some big names on top. Komsky's been like on a, a tear recently in Title Tuesdays. Over 3,000 Blitz. Feruja now entered. Danya Hikaru. Grishuk. Mamadov. Bortnik, 17th seed. Chris Yu. Jeffrey Zhang. Yeah, I have to scroll down pretty far to find me. 
I'm the 86 seed. Wait, so if I do the quick math, 86. Oh, now I'm 100. Wow. That really changed quickly. Did I hallucinate? Was I actually 86 just a moment ago? A lot of people just joined. I'm trying to do the math. Like if there is... Because the way the pairings work, I'll play... Man, so many people joined in the last few minutes, though. That it's hard to do the math. So 314... Okay, let's say there's 400 players total. And let's say I'm like 120th seed. Then we divide by two, so 200. So I'd play number 200 plus 150. So I'd play 350 the first round, I think. And then I would play up the second round. Because so I think it's standard Swiss pairings. Thank you, Slimy Slim. Good luck, Eric. Eight oh, points, my guess. I don't think I've ever gotten eight out of 11 in Taiwan Tuesday, but I appreciate you believing in me. Okay, starts in 90 seconds. I do have to remember to enable emote only mode. Also, if there's any mods watching, uh, there is a new requirement for Title Tuesday that during gameplay, Emote only must be enabled. So it'd be good to turn on emote only when the game begins and turn it off when the game ends. Hey, it's Toggy. Toggy's a mod. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Happy 50. Welcome back. Hello, hello, hello. Toggy, Toggy, Toggy. Just in time. Starting in 30 some seconds. I did not play the earlier title Tuesday today. So I feel like my my brain is a bit more active later in the day. I'm not a, a morning person. Okay, I'll be muting alerts too. So almost 400 players. I'm the 110 seed. There we go. Playing International Master. Okay, we'll have some kind of English ready Catalan type thing. I'm debating what to do. I'll play Bishop D6. It's been a slightly offbeat, but pet line of mine recently. So the two main moves are D4 and B3. Um, if d4, I think I'll play this line, knight c6. It's weird development. Like, usually the black pieces don't develop like this in the Catalan. The idea is to eventually take and play e5. And I think I can take right away. I mean, the standard move is e5 or e4, and then I can respond with e5. There might be a line like d5. All right, let's play this. White will likely win back the pawn. We could see a lot of trades, like takes, 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 takes. C6 in the end. Yeah, C6 is useful, restricting the knight and the bishop. So I have queen e7. Looks okay. Have to watch out for this idea. Rook e8. Ooh, rook e8, bishop c5, queen c7, f4. Worst case, I take the knight. Maybe I could have started with this. But the rook is well placed.
H6 looks natural. Keeping a time edge. Maybe this idea at some point. B3. The rook d8. Because this work is this rook is now overworked, I'm threatening to maybe take or maybe take your first potential tactics. Okay, I'm smelling blood. I mean, I have this and this, or I have this. But then I guess there's bishop e3. Uh, what to do? That's a crazy line. Okay, let's start by taking. There's a crazy, crazy line that involves sacrificing everything. I might spend the rest of my time on this move. Because if it wins, it wins. Knight e4, oh no, my queen, bishop h3. Check here, check, oh no, my knight, g6. Ah, there's queen g2. Doesn't quite work. So what about 90, 95? Take, take. I think that works. Oh, there's a G4, though. Oh. I'm spending way too much time here. What about just this move? Rook d3, uh. Okay, I'll play this end game. Rook d3. Play this. I burned all my time and basically lost my whole advantage too. But why just blunder the bishop? Okay. <laughs> I'll have to analyze. I didn't see the clear win. Okay. Oh, that was a funny finish. All right. Turning off emote only. Let's. Um... Oh, I have a new extension. People can't see, but it's in my browser thing. I can click one button. I haven't tried it yet, actually. Hopefully this works. I click one button. Wait for it. Wait for it. And it brings it over to Leechess. And it automatically runs like the analysis, too. I think like people have been mentioning this extension over the last couple of years. And I was too lazy to get it. And then like before I started streaming today, it came to mind. And um Yeah, it's actually like it's quite nice. I, I slightly prefer Leechas for analysis, especially with the databases. So um yeah, this is a pretty offbeat line, Bishop D6 right away. It's like the seventh most popular move. Thank you, Russman. Thank you, MLP. Yeah, the extension, you can just search for like Chesscom Lee Chess Chrome extension. And um, it's like the first hit. What is it called? It's called chess.com analysis at Lee Chess.
Yeah, so there's a line where black has h6 included. Like h6, b3 can be included. And we'll see a lot more games. Like Carlson has played this twice as black. Um, but yeah, I discovered that h6 isn't so necessary because the bishop doesn't always want to come to g5. And then let's see. I made oh I made one blunder this game. Where's my one blunder? Ah, knight d5. Yeah, I've, I made the one blunder where I took the most amount of time. So the idea I missed was bishop g4. Ah, double attack. But what if rookie three? It's not that simple, but maybe it is. Queen coming. And white's pieces are ridiculous. Like every single piece for white is just on a like really bad square. Do you need to pay Lee Chess? Um what are what's the site? Leechess.org slash features. This is what you get. For a free account, you can also get a Patreon account, which is when you pay Lee Chess. And this is a breakdown of, um, wait, let me make sure a game's not starting. I think we're good. So basically, if you don't pay Lee Chess, you still get all the features. The only thing you don't get is a little badge next to your name. Yeah, you you do have to pay your internet service provider. And Lee Chess like solely runs on um user support. So you can click this button. Okay, next game. Let's uh get back to chess.com, title Tuesday. Whoa, it's Magnus Carlson. When did Magnus join? Okay, one game going. I think I'll be playing up next round. Oh yeah, $250, you get the lifetime page patron badge. Okay, white's winning, but white's also the lower rated player. This game could actually go a bit longer. How to win this pawn. You gotta maneuver to g3 with the knight, but then rook h7, so not super clear. Yeah, I'll only turn on emote only once the uh, next game begins. When was the last pawn mover capture? Move 99. So white's going to have to figure out a way to make progress by move 149. It's actually still crazy that white's having trouble here. You might have to like walk the king around and sack the e-pawn. Oh, there goes the h-pawn. Okay, this is now an easier win for white. H-pawn is too strong. Oh, be careful though. Black has a devious mating idea. That was a good try. Rook f2 was a mate threat. Wow, now black's almost running perpetual. Like it's almost perpetual, but there is a king h4 and knight g3. <gasps> black won on time. That's crazy. Also, is the final position not winning for white? The final position was drawn. Wow. Oh, I'm playing down. No Magnus for me. Maybe later in the tournament, though. Okay, emote only mode is back on. Oh, <laughs> I see Josh uh, also tried to enable it. 
So we have a England gambit. Bishop g4, bishop g5. At some point I've looked at these lines. Knight c3. London time. Yeah, my opponent played the anti-London on move one. What to do? I should really know what to do here. I mean, takes in knight b5 looks nice. Just trying to get the bishop pair. Bishop b4, c3. I'm up a pawn, preventing black from casting queenside, which is a typical theme in these lines. It looks like I'm either getting the bishop pair or trading queens. Like both outcomes would be nice. Thank you, Flynn Cook, LOL. Okay, I've muted alerts, so got to stay fully focused. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that last game, though. All right, what to do? H3, E3. I think E3 and bishop E2. There's queen f 5 so maybe e4? Controls a bit more space. It restricts the knight. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm so indecisive here. H3 first, perhaps. Yeah. I might give back the pawn. And I have queen d3, but then bishop g6. Do I have knight e4? No, knight e4 doesn't work. Oh, maybe I have a uh, start with queen d3, bishop g6, knight d2, defending and threatening this, maybe. Knight b4 always walks into queen c3 check. Logical. Which way to castle? Knight b4 might be coming. But then maybe like queen b3. Bishop e3. d5 might come. I should have considered knight d4. I have this move. Uh, I can also take. There's definitely pressure here. Oh, taking doesn't work. Let's play this move. So bishop takes, I'm happy to have two bishops versus two knights. C3. Useful move, restricting the knight and the pawn. Simple tempo moves. So now I'm setting up takes and then takes. Tempo 
tactics. I do concede the dark sword bishop, which is actually a really nice piece, but I win a pawn, I get initiative. King c8 might be played. King c8, bishop c5. Opponent burning all the time. So Queen A8 is now a resource, threatening the knight as well. Maybe Queen B3. Still have to be careful. Actually, let's let's be extra safe. Wait, let's not save though. Let's try it anyway. Ugh. I just want to trade. Wow. I mean, I'm losing after knight c6. That's crazy. I realized it right after I played bishop a4 or 2. But my opponent didn't have enough time. And I don't think I was finding bishop e8 here to, to hold on. Oh man, it's still much worse for white. Okay, very fortunate there. Yeah, I think I just relaxed after bishop a7 and then didn't realize like it's still really tricky because this move is coming. Is like very unpleasant. White's better. So rook a d1, g4. Ah, just take on d5. Yeah, and this move and this move is coming. I panicked a little bit. Okay, two out of two. Thank you, RTR Obama. Look at this opening name. The England Gambit Hartlob Charlock Gambit. I guess that that's denoted with uh, D6 on move two. Hmm. So I don't think I'll play Magnus next round. Because I'll be one of the lowest players with two points. And assuming he has two, he'll be one of the highest. Unless is he still playing? Or did he not win? Let's watch a game, first of all. If there's any games still going. Okay, all the games are actually wrapping up. So I'm top 40. Not seeing Magnus. Control F Magnus. Oh, he's trying to two. That's weird. I guess it it's not in rating order. I like how I'm above Magnus currently. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, next round will start very, very soon. Trying to close out of my tabs. Who is this again? Chagayev. Oh, Chagayev just played the Olympic event in Singapore. I was watching some of his games. I'll play Sicilian. Uh, play a G6. 
go for a dragon. Uh, rook e8. I'm trying to remember the theory. So f3, there's e6 and d5. There's a trendy line f4. And this is my secret opening prep. I played once before in Title Tuesday, and it didn't go so well. But I'm trying to remember that the game it was like several months ago. So the idea is after takes, takes, there's counterplay. I think whatever it takes, I take back. I'm pretty sure the only good line for white is to take the knight with the pawn. Okay, this move I, I've never analyzed. I assume I take and take. And it's a big trade. So I have the bishop pair, but yeah, white has some um, positional perks. I play f6 here. Walks into bishop takes e6. g5 is a candidate move. e6. I'm also thinking just d5 on Poisson, bishop f8. Really not sure. B six. I'll try D five. I might be just losing a pawn. But maybe I take my time like trying to win it back. Like takes just bishop d7 to c6. Okay, so now f6. c4 might be coming. But at the very least, like b2's attacked. I'm actually wondering about a4, b5 takes a4, bishop c2, a3. Looks crazy. Could also just play bishop d7. Oh, there's also uh, this rook lift idea. Okay, a4, rook a6. I kind of like the, the idea of this. b5, rook b8. a4, bishop d7. We trade. This is b-pawn's a long-term target. I think black has a few more resources to apply pressure. Knight d4 ever, I can take it. I didn't really look at c4, but again, b2 would hang. The power of the two bishops.
cake. Uh, finding a new diagonal. It's a three result game. Maybe bishop c8. Because now I want to keep both bishops on the board. And this bishop looks nice, but it's a little bit out of play. Look f8. Bishop d6. Maybe just bishop a8. Not sure. That's a safe move. Might be worse here. Uh, oh, it's so sad. Had great chances. Okay, good game. That was a good fight. I mean, I got like this cool opening idea, which I think was successful. But after knight c3, I think this is the beginning of the, the tides turning a little bit. Like, I really wanted to play bishop a8, which maybe I should have trusted my instincts. But it just seemed to give back too much, like this and this. And this I saw him winning f4, but I mean, white has some more active pieces. Of course, it should still be very close to a draw. So, can I click my magical button? Just to get very quick feedback. I just want to check the opening of this uh, knight takes c6 move. Wow. Wow. Okay, this is something that would have been really nice to know in case it happens again. The best move for black, actually a huge advantage for black, is not to go into this trading line, even though it's still better. It's just to take back, leaving the knight hanging. So how does this work? Takes, takes king f2. Wow. Oh, because takes takes d4. Black is still down material in this line. But, yeah, two bishops, open king. Especially dark for a bishop is so strong. After d5, this bishop will be um, very misplaced. Do! 
A new game. Okay. Oops. Giving small time odds. Thank you, chat, for alerting me. <laughs> okay, that's not too bad. Burned about, what, 30 seconds? I'll try and make it up in the opening. So, playing the Ray Robson variation, which isn't an official name, but yeah, Ray Robson is the one who made this popular years ago. Usually I have this position with casting included. I don't think it makes much of a difference. This idea still has the same point as after it takes rook b8, uh, black will win b2. The queen doesn't take, then I just develop. Pretty sure this is a move. Bishop a5 and then bishop a6 takes takes queen d1, knight g4. Let's try it. It looks like I'm just blundering bishop a5. I've studied similar positions where the queen is like on c2 or a4. Okay, white doesn't go for it. Play this move anyway. F2 is now very tender. Any way to exploit it? I could play queen c7. Queen c7. Now with bishop a5, there's bishop f2 winning the queen. So we might see e3 at some point. I had bishop b4. Oh, there's a bit of e7. Looks like a safe move. It's the type of move that doesn't require so much mental energy to play. And it has the idea of tripling up. Bishop's now pinned. It can take. No, that doesn't work. Bishop e2, maybe. But then rook c1. So what about bishop b5 first? Okay. So take... And then there's bishop d6. Keep queens on the board. So I'm calculating this. Okay, that, that's not happening. Queen d8. I could play rook c6, actually. But then knight d4. All right, let's play this. And maybe I should just go for knight d5 at some point. Bishop a5 is now a move. Can I get away? No, I can't get away with taking. Try this. Calculating takes, takes... No, uh, really. Okay, making it crazy. What was my bishop doing on e2?
Threading this. I have five seconds left. That's not good. Queen C4 is coming. Knight d4, knight d4, queen a4, maybe. Uh, allowing knight of no, knight of5, I just take it. Queen is defended. Bishop f6, perhaps. It's compensation. Winning back material. Very close to mating. I thought I was winning the pawn. I didn't realize I was mate. Ah, look at my clutch pawns. It's a side rank mate as opposed to back rank or a side file mate. Yeah, um, of a rotated rank, which is a file. There were a lot of mistakes that game. I hung a rook. Oh, I hung a rook. Might move backwards. Only winning move, like a basic uh, puzzle rush. What a game. Oh man. Do I have a free queen at some point? Yeah, the rotated rank. That was round four. So we have a much needed break. Yeah, rook b6 was maybe not necessary. It's a tricky move. Like the point is um, this move, and there's there's compensation for that. I really like this magical button. It just brings a game. Oh man, look at this graph. It analyzed the last few moves of the game, and there's already five blunders from White and three blunders from myself. Oh man. Oh yeah, this is a game that I I showed up to 30 seconds late. Oh, thank you um earlier, Chess Gamerin. I didn't acknowledge the raid. Shout out to Chess Gamerin. Good luck, sir. Thank you, Richter. Also, shout out to Nate Brady. Uh who's also a fellow streamer. Oh, thank you, Halvard. Cha Nay Brady twenty three. Okay, I got some shout outs in chat. So a few things to do. I have the timer thing, so there's probably games still going. Man, look at this graph. So I was like much better at some point after Rook D one. What did I miss? Rook d6, 
throw. Need to do more rook lifting. So I'm trying to understand, like rook d6, queen c2, where's the win? Like, why is it minus four? The thing's defended. Is there some crazy, like, bishop? Does bishop f2 really work? It might actually work. Bishop f2 takes knight g4. And then knight e3 is guaranteed. Wow. Only winning move. It's even worse for white to take it. Hey, thank you, Andy Oxus. Gifting five. Wow. Yeah, we were both below 70% accuracy. <laughs> Deservingly so. Like, look at this finish. I played rook f1, hanging a rook. And then... Opponent didn't take it. Instead, they take, allowing rook takes f2, which I didn't play. I take back, leaving my rook hanging. And then rook takes g6, again not taking the rook. I take the pawn. And then taking is a blunder because it allows h7, which I think I saw during the game. And there's no way to stop queening. Like, there's no counterplay. But instead, white takes. And then I find the the win. But even like before h7, white's still okay with king h2 or rook g7. What a crazy finish. Seven blunders versus eight blunders. There's so many blunders in a row too. Blunder, 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 blunder. It's like four blunders. Back to back to back to back. Okay, we are on break. So I'm going to get some more water. Wait, I hung a queen. Oh, my opponent hung their queen. <laughs> like when I played... When I played this move, I saw this attack. And then after this move, I was too focused on this attack. I forgot about the original attack. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. Playing Zhigalko. I played Zhigalko. Actually, I played him yesterday. I didn't stream yesterday, but I played this uh, the Karo Decathlon. And we went into some line, I think the queen f3 line. It was a bullet game. Okay, he plays bishop e7. I think I can still play queen f3 here. I go for h, I mean, there's h4 or g4. I like the idea of um, h4, h5. Because I want to put the queen here and not allow knight h5. And for the time being, like most knight moves hang the bishop. Otherwise, castle queenside. Castle queenside. Looks risky, like takes, takes, takes. Oh, that might be a line because d3 hangs in the end. Okay, so now I might be threatening this. Like bishop h6, 98, take, take, and then h6. That's logical. Play pawn h6, knight f3 makes sense. I like the idea of h6 first. 
Although I just allowed, I mean, knight h5 is still not possible because rook h5. Probably king b1 here. I'm okay conceding light squared bishop. So the files kind of stay closed on the king side, but there's still long term potential. Pawn on h6. Bishop g5, f6. Hmm. Use rook c1. So knights versus bishops. I mean, white has a bit more space, a bit more center. It's a good move. I really want a pawn cube. Can my pawn and queen switch places? G4, G5. And pawn actually wants to be on F4. So making way, also over defending this. This could get really crazy really quickly. Wow. Four take. And takes her as queen d4. Takes my plans to take on e5.
Yeah. I was not hanging. Oops. I pray that this leads to something. Oh no, my knight. Oh no, my king. Ugh. <laughs> uh, crazy finish. It's almost a trick. Like, towards the final position. Um, If... Wait. Yeah, if the knight's taken, then I'm mating with this, 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 this. But... Yeah, he saw it. Bishop F8 was a good move. I didn't realize I have this move, but I don't think it helps because takes, takes, takes. Not what to do. That was a cool game. Um, I just, I didn't realize that Bishop defended A3. Also, yeah, there's Rook D3 here. But even so, it's, um, it's difficult for White. And then earlier, let's see. That was a cool position. I mean, I wasn't like so much for choice. At some point, black was probably like clearly for choice with this imbalance. Yeah, it's so hard to get the queen here. Okay, it was a fun game, though. I'm three out of five. Life goes on. Real quick, I'll do the thing. Um, I have the, the Lee Chess engine run. I'll go back. Wow. Magnus and Hikaru, five out of five. I'm on a quest to catch them, but facing some hurdles. Danya against Darnock, or against um, Dretch. Sometimes goes by Darnock. Wait, what about violators being erased? I'm not sure if I know the context of that. Yeah, some of the analysis tools I just prefer on LeechS. It's mainly the integration of the LeechS and Masters database. Um, but then there's a bit more functionality with the engine too. When I click on the bottom. Thank you, followers. Happy 38. So I made three blunders, but okay, at this point is already pretty bad. Opponent made one blunder. Oh, not taking on D3. Okay. Yeah, Lichas is uh is completely free. I was showing I was showing this page earlier of the breakdown between a free account and a, a Patreon account. If you choose to support Lichas, you, you get all the same features as a free account, but you also get the the Patreon badge. So, um, let me close some tabs. Oh, 
Okay. I keep missing the game. I don't think it's making a sound when it starts. Unless it is and I'm just missing it. <laughs> okay, email only mode. Here we go. So we have uh, another dragon. This line. Yeah, I've encountered this line a lot. I've yet to actually learn the theory. I mean, I know some basic ideas. D6 is maybe a move. I mean, this might be going wrong very quickly. So the idea, there I mean, both these pawns are pinned, even though they're staring at each other. My pawn's pinned to the queen. This pawn was pinned to b2. Now, I could take... There's bishop g4, there's bishop b6. Develop with tempo. One idea is to chase the queen away from controlling a5. In the prospect of queen a5 looks nice. Just want to get all the pieces involved. A2 is undefended. We might see queen a3 here. Like what else for white to do? This pawn a3 looks risky. I guess queen a3 I could take and then take. Okay, here I can take on e5. I win back the pawn. I keep initiative in that line too. Bishop c3. Hmm. So there's queen a4. Idea being, if takes, I have bishop g4. And if takes, I take and still bishop g4. So this pawn is basically pinned to the g4 square. Making sure I'm not missing anything. I think my opponent just probably overlooked this. But it may have already been difficult for white. So, yeah, I'll be winning the exchange. White has a pawn for it. But I still have initiative. There's queen f4. I could take and take on b2. I think taking on e5 is just better. Preparing the double up. Rook d1, rook d8. After this game, I, I should really check the theory of the variation. Check. Rook d2. Okay. Eventually winning the bishop.
had to have some fun with the multi pre moving. So, um, that was round seven or six. What round was that? That was round six. So, four out of six. Oh, thank you, Josh, for sending me something. Oh, I see. Ah, okay. So when I click the thing, wait, what? Why is this not working? Link copy to clipboard. How about now? There we go. Very, okay. So there's a very quick page that flashes that says variations will be erased. It would be funny if it said violators will be erased. Okay. So, um, we went into a line. It was actually the same line I had against Chigayev in round three. But Chigayev played bishop c4, which is the main line. So knight b3, or um, knight takes e6 is the third most common move played by Garry Kasparov in 2002. And what am I supposed to do? Oh, knight g8 is the best move. I feel like I should know that. I've always played knight d5. And then this is supposedly just better for white. Wow, this is much better. Yeah, bishop takes a7. Oh no, my pawns. My queenside pawns. Knight g8, delayed Brooklyn. Yeah, for those that don't know, the Brooklyn defense is this. So knight g8, losing two tempi, but now the pawn's overextended. f4... I should really take the time to learn the lines here. Knight h6, queen d2, d6 or castling. And black scores pretty well in the database, only based on eight games. Oh, if takes, there's knight f5. That's kind of cool. Novelty. Almost novelty. Okay. So basically, the thing to remember, retreat the knight, redevelop it, go for knight f5, d6, castling, and then I'll hopefully be in better shape compared to previous times I played this line. But this game... I didn't make any blunders. I just made, like some bad move in the opening and then okay this was already winning for black okay oh it did make a sound it was a very faint sound okay only giving like six second timeouts this time all right so we have a lunge Oh, playing a very high rated I am. Who is this? <sighs> I think a five is playable. Queen a four. So b four. Bishop F1 first. Yeah, the plan is to do this stuff. Inspired by the the Ding Nepo game in the London.
All right, horsies are pretty active here. And this backward sea pawn isn't really a huge weakness. But what to do now? Rook e3? Some idea of tripling up. Hmm. Some f4 idea... H3 for good measure. Idea rookie one. Now that's slightly annoying. What if I take on B7? I hit the queen. And takes, 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 maybe? It was a huge trade. Oh, there's also um, takes, queen takes. Okay, so now I can take. I think I have to take on e7. Going after the a pawn. D5. Oh, I had queen d5 there, maybe. I have rook d1. Queen b4, queen d5. I think this and this. Knight moves, there's check and winning the rook. Rook defends, I have this. How does black defend? Bishop e4? Rook e5. Feels really close to winning, but I think I have to take the knight first. I need some check in rook e8. King's going to come to g6. Could take and just draw. I'll burn all my time. Let me try it. We'll have some fun. This might backfire. Rook's not too useful here. I should have played rook d8. And black can still bail out.
draw. No draw. So G7 is a target. I think I'm playing for a win. Chess is a draw. <laughs> oh, what a crazy game. Maybe I had chances there? I don't know. Engine will tell me. Oh, no, my heart rate. Or, oh, yes, my heart rate. Heart's still beating after that one. Yeah, I was winning at some point. Queen h7 check. Ah, winning f7. That's hard with a time situation. Wow. I was never worse this game. Like, literally never worse. <laughs> I was equal at many points. My most winning position was here. Rook d4. Chasing the queen away and f4 comes next. I had so little time. That was a fun game, though. Yeah, it was one of these London opening um, lines, which it's not super theoretical, but it's very strategic. Like all this positional play on the queen side and okay, black went for e5. I like the position overall, though, like very controlled position. I thought maybe I would be worse around here, but I think knight b7 was a nice resource. Okay. So, going back to the tournament, no perfect scores. We have Oh, there's uh, one more game going. That was round seven, so there'll be a break after the next round. This could be a long game, maybe? Yeah, this is a pretty routine draw. Although now, okay, yeah, still draw. Thank you, Volticus. Happy three months. Okay, new game. Playing Pinga. All right, we have Taimana. I wasn't really planning to play a Taimana this tournament, but 
I kind of got tricked into it. Mighty Four is the main line here. Knight C6 also playable. Opponent doesn't seem to be super booked up here. And this is probably one of the first lines I learned when learning how to play the Taimanov. So queen d4. I think now I have d5. Center is strengthened. But it's still a fight. Bishop will probably drop back. Like if the bishop comes here or here. Although bishop d4, maybe um maybe e5. So it might be six rook here. I might lose a six at some point. But then c2 should fall. Yeah, so it takes takes. Okay, now I'm hitting both pawns. I don't think I can take because rook c1. So now e4. That looks nice. Trying to be active. I wasn't sure what to do there. Seems like a solid move. Now the queen's not tied down. White's queen is tied down to the bishop. Yeah, I was wondering about uh, bishop h2. Bishop h2, king f1. I think I just go for it. King f1, bishop f4. If king h1, I can take. I was also trying to calculate king f1 takes, takes queen f4, rook c2. But I think bishop f4 just looks stronger. Because if takes, I can throw in this move. And if takes here, I take, take, take. The king's very open. Rook's very active. Nice thing about the rook's doubled is there's no rook b1. Time is on my side. about queen a7 not happening yeah i'm gonna have queen g3 oh there's queen d3 check wow so maybe i really just go for king h8 and then this not even taking the oh there's rook c2 though or even bishop c2 
Yeah. I think I have to take the bishop. Still pressure though. A lot of pressure. Rook here, here. Rook c1, then rook 8b2. Okay. Rook. How to do this? Rook d2? I could take first. Might as well. Rook f2 coming. Threatening mate. Queen g1, rook 8b2. Okay. Whew. It took work. I mean, I think I was in control most of the time. It just got a little bit trickier than I initially thought because this queen d3 idea. Thank you, Lamb. Happy 20 months. Thank you, No Slaying. Thank you, Leonie. The first time prime. Also, Bubberbot. Thanks, everyone who I didn't acknowledge who sub, uh, or subs during the game. Move 24, rook h2. Is not legal. Oh, you mean queen h2, maybe. Well, I was in check, though, so... Um, queen h2 is maybe an idea at some point, like here. Move 23? Actually, queen h2 might... Is it winning? The problem is white has this resource bishop c2. Like, I was considering queen g3 is the move I wanted to play, but I think with queen g3 or queen h2, there's bishop c2, and... The rook is cut off. Was there king c4? Probably um, meaning knight c4. Early. Not sure if my knight could have ever legally moved to c4. Unless you mean knight c5. Like here. Which is a move. Yeah, knight c5, because takes, takes, this pawn is weak. Actually, this is a cool line, because rook f1, I have this move. Maybe there's rook c2, though. Then still this move. Knight c5 was definitely an alternative. Engine. Yeah, knight c5, top engine move. But bishop h2 also, like, top two moves are pretty close. They're two very different ideas. Yeah, no worries. I usually try and uh, interpret what uh, what moves are being suggested. <laughs> so uh, that was round eight. Five and a half out of eight. I think there's one more game going this round. Classic Rook and Knight versus Rook. So watch this game and then I'll probably take a break momentarily. I think you will Scherzer. Will Will Scherzer. <laughs> I struggled with that name for a moment. Happy 18 months. Wow, what has just happened? Oh, I got forked. That's the one thing you're not supposed to do with the, the rook. And these games have all been like very tough today. Like every single game is a fight. Let's take a look at the standings. Wow. 
Magnus is six and a half out of eight. So I'm only one point behind Magnus. Top 50. 45th place. I'll probably play a higher rated opponent, although I'm not sure. Not too many people with five and a half. Wow, Andraken with five and a half. I could play Andraken next game. Oh, man. Have I ever gotten the chance to play the Lucchini? I feel like only like once or twice. It's not an opening I've tried to play so consistently. Who's number one? Nope. Oh, no time to look. Okay. A little bit of time to look. Sean Sargsyan. All right. Here we go. Get some sound. Uh, we'll have London versus Slav. Hmm. I think with this setup, I'm better off just sticking with like a normal London approach. H3, castle. C4. It does resemble more of a Queen's Gambit type position. Thinking about A4. Maybe just A3. I'm just improving the pieces. This bishop is kind of sad. I think the queen should go to b4 if I get the chance. And some e4 idea. Hmm. That's a move I forgot about. Hmm. F4. I take first bishop d6 and then f4. I control b8, so it's hard for black to make use of the b file so soon. Like there's some bishop f8 e5 idea. Uh, 
I don't mind if we trade darks for bishops because this bishop is so sad. Wants to play e5. I think I just play e5 myself. If we trade, I think I have to take with a pawn. Oh, I was hanging? I guess I was hanging. But maybe I don't care. Maybe I do care. Crazy position. Super risky play. No, my move didn't reach the server. Uh, oh, what to do? I think I'm like much worse in the final position, but uh, it's disappointing. This is super interesting having like the dark spurs. This bishop was about to find life, though. Maybe this move is better. Maybe it's already just losing. Let's see. At some point, it looked nice. E5 was probably the wrong approach. Yeah, it just had to keep things controlled. I was scared about black getting an E5, but I think I was just being afraid of ghosts. This didn't really exist as a threat. And even here it's better, but this is a hard move to find. Takes, takes, I guess the knight comes in, wow. Okay, GG. So um, I'm not finishing with more than eight or exactly eight. My max score is seven and a half. Let's watch Chris Yu. Okay, this should be a draw, but positions like this, all three results are still possible. Man, black really close to flagging.
Okay, now Bach is playing for a win. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Magnus lost again, but he still has a point more than me, unfortunately. What just happened? What just happened? Oh, box pawn was going that way. Wow. Yeah, this is completely winning now. Black is playing on the light squares. Nice move. Oh no, my bishop. Well played. Good technique. Okay. Oh, playing this player. This player likes to be crazy. You know, last time I played him, we saw some g5. Might see h5 too. I don't think we're going to get a real opening, though. <laughs> Back to emote only. Thank you, Fuxia. Opponent of deliberating what to play. Maybe they didn't hear the, hear the noise of the game starting. I can very much relate. Yeah, I played this opponent a good number of times on Lee Chess. We've had a lot of games that start with um, the H-pawn advance. Usually when he's white, he likes to play H4. Okay, here we see h6. So g5, I'll, I'll do this um, anti-grab thing. More like an anti-borg. Reverse grab. So, a little bit of prep. c5. Makes sense. Can I get away with this. So I'm calculating takes, takes, queen b6, bishop e3, takes knight d2. Which maybe... Maybe isn't called for. Oh, I have knight f5 as well. Ah, so in this line, yeah, I'll lose b2 here, and then knight c6 having three attackers... I play that a five. Wait, I still have to calculate this. Take so. I guess I can play this first. There's also this move, which probably doesn't work. It's getting weird. So I'm hitting the bishop, defending the pawn. Bishop f6, I trap the bishop. B2 is still hanging, but I want to take with check. So I'm not actually threatening to win the bishop because um, queen a5 would win the knight. But it's awkward for black. Uh, that's a tricky move. Take the bishop, take the knight. I'll also just move back. Can I just move back in b3? We might see this move. Knight d2. How many pawns can I sack on the queen side? Yeah, I think I sack like the A and B pawn. If if takes knight d2, bishop here, and then rook b1.
Expecting bishop g7. Knight b4 is maybe a move, but then rook c1. Or bishop e5. Yeah, very strange position. Huge time advantage. Wow, ninety four. So if I take, I mean, black gets some pawns, but I get a piece. And then bishop b5 check and castle. Yeah, a position like this, an extra knight should be more valuable than the pawns. But it still takes work. I don't think I want to take that. Not a 5, queen e5. Oh, there's a funny line actually. I think I'll start with queen c2. And then rook e8, or rook e1. I still want to play knight f5. I think I can still play knight f5 here. Oh, well, maybe this first, h4, knight f5. This first, threading this and this. Now this e4 square is very valuable. Okay. That was an interesting game. <laughs> A slightly obscure opening, as expected. But, uh. Yeah, there is a line. I was actually wondering about Queen b2 immediately. The engine just likes this for white. The engine can crunch through everything. Ah, rook b1, queen c3. Oh, rook c1. Wow. And then if knight c6, I wasn't actually sure about this. Bishop d4 still rook c1, but this is different. Okay, eventually there's a tactic, like takes, takes rook c1 here and then here. Okay. Matt is asking why knight g3 on move 10. Let's see. Oh, knight g3 was played on move 4, but also played on move 10. Your opponent's pawn blocks the queen capturing your knight. Oh, yeah. I did point out that after this, there's this. But d5 unleashes the bishop. So the knight's still in danger. And I didn't want to go for this line. Because then, actually, black seems to have a fine position here. I thought it's nice, like, keeping the pawn on e5 and keeping the knight. Yeah, I had the same thought, though, that d5 blocks the fifth rank. But that was an interesting discovery attack. Okay, six and a half. Did I catch up to Magnus? Magnus should be at seven and a half. Unless he withdrew. Nope, he's still here. So I'm not gonna play Magnus. Unless like everyone withdraws before the last round, except us two. That's unlikely. Wow. So this is one of the last games going. Black is probably playing for the win. We're looking from white's perspective. 
yeah, White's on the verge of losing, I think. Although, yeah. Oh, we're going to see Queen versus Rook. Yeah, this is very hard to defend. I mean, it's objectively winning for Black, too. But it's also, uh, this endgame is very hard to win against Engine if you're playing the side with King and Queen. Engine defends very annoyingly. So. Um, any more games going? Okay, final round starting soon. Oh, one game going. No. Here we go. I know this guy. I'm playing my former roommate. Okay. C4. It's a battle of the Eric's. Usually, anytime we play each other, it makes its way to YouTube in some dual commentary video. Shout out to everyone watching in the future on YouTube. Eric's usually an E4 player, but I guess he's switched a little bit. All right, we'll go into this. So the two main moves are knight f3 and knight e2. If knight e5 too soon, there's c5, which is supposed to be strong. If ever bishop g3, I take it. I think there's a move here, rook c8. It's this new move I've been studying. Um, now b5. My idea is to get knight to c4, but that's probably not happening anymore. I have this move. Knight d4 comes. does look a little bit passive. Under a bit of positional pressure. But the structure seems solid. Maybe this move. Although a4 might happen. So this move. Queen side's completely closed down. How to do this? King h1, knight g8. Knight h5. Maybe knight h5, actually. Because then that discourages bishop g3. Essentially forces the trade of minor pieces. Usually, the minor piece trade favors a side with less space. King f8 also possible. Makes a little bit more sense. Oh, I've just blundered. Yeah. I'm allowing uh, 96. And there's not a great looking way to deal with it. Yeah. 
There, there. On the bright side, the files are closed. So my night is maybe a little bit more valuable than normal. On the dark side, I'm losing material. Also, he's just letting my rooks marinate on the back rank before he consumes one of them. So this knight wants to come to c4. Easier said than done. I want to make sure this e4 break isn't so achievable. Yeah, maybe I just hold my ground, like just wait. Rook e7. What is white's plan? Ah, rook f5 is a plan, so this move. Queen f5 also might be coming. Okay, 94 now. Maybe I can start kicking the rook around. F5. F5, there's queen h5. Looks playable though, rook f7. I'm trying to boast about the fact that I have a knight and my opponent doesn't. It's like holding up my baby for the whole world to see. Okay, there's this idea. Or this idea, triple fork potential. Although E2 is defended. Really? Am I losing? I have to take it this way. I'm still alive. Tricky move, though. Yeah, the, the end game is losing. Good game, though. What a game. The problem is after takes here, 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 and white has opposition. Here, here. This looks long. What a fight. I wasn't expecting to survive that long. It's sad that I allowed the queen trade. Like, my queen should probably be 
Also, it's hard to find a square to defend the pawn and not allow the checks. Maybe c6 was a, a better square. I don't know. Okay. Well, Eric won. What to do? <laughs> the wrong Eric. Eric's a strong player. And it seems like he's mixing up the openings, too. Like, around here, it felt like I was holding on, but... Wow, Bordnik winning. Let me check with engine. Rook f3. Yeah, it requires very precise play from black. Wow. Oh, I still had rook f3 because a3 is weak. But I was more defensively minded. Hey, it's W. Grave. What's up, Will? Hope you had a good one. Maybe also played Title Tuesday. So if you're just joining, just finished Title Tuesday. Uh, finished with six and a half. I think my rating stayed around the same. We do have, or we did have a prediction. Wait, what? Okay, this is not my game. I don't know, it was just a random game popped up. <laughs> That's so weird. I don't think I was following either of these players. And it's not part of Title Tuesday. That scared me for a moment. I have a lot of tabs open. Let's close all of these. Oops. Okay, let's close, close, close. Okay. So we see the final standings here. Let me award the prediction. So before the tournament, people wagered channel points. Three serious doubters. Six and a half, 19 people. A 26 for seven. Four very true believers. Okay, that's a par score. Complete. Oh, now I'm watching. Why are games just randomly popping up? <laughs> Do I unknowingly like follow people? Is there a place to like see who I'm following? I guess it's not a bad thing to just casually watch a game. <laughs> oh. Wow, 3,300. Nihal might farm Danya for rating. Looks like he's about to with this game. Okay, what to do? Do I keep streaming? I have a little bit of coconut water left, but not too much. Are you still in the decathlon? Maybe referring to Hikaru's decathlon. I did play the bullet event yesterday. I didn't stream it, but um, yeah, for that you can kind of pick and choose which tournaments to play in. How did you do in the Vegas chess tournament? You can see the playlist on YouTube. The Vegas command will now link to playlist of all nine of my recap videos. But if you want a spoiler, uh, I finished with five and a half out of nine. And I had some really interesting games. Like every single game had a story to it.
Dad, I never get to catch your streams anymore. Except this time. Thanks for catching one. <laughs> I know some people get busy, but I appreciate those that tune in even once in a while. Uh, yeah, I saw something about the lawsuit. I didn't really look into it. Oh, Josh has an IRL streaming mic. What, um, I'm curious of the brand. I bought like um, a wireless, one of these Rode Wireless Go mics recently. Or not recently, but a while ago. I really haven't used it too often for streaming. Oh, got some lav mics. Did I gain rating in Vegas? Uh, yes and no. I gained five US rating points, US chess rating points. I lost five FIDE points. I gained some in the Blitz tournament. I may have gained like five or 10 in Blitz. Hey, your pink eye is gone. That's nice. Oh, Mr. Weeks TTV has a videography business and uses wireless mics a lot. I didn't know DJI makes wireless mics. Oh, they're just bulky. Yeah, the one thing I've bought from DJI was a drone years ago. <laughs> Haven't used it in a few years, though. Oh, it's a time scramble. Danya with the pre-moving. Do you play Minecraft? No, I've never played Minecraft. I don't even know how to play. Like, do you need to install something? Do you need like a, you probably don't need an Xbox. I think it's done. Can you do it on your phone? It's not like chess where you can just do it in real life, I don't think. Do you have a least favorite opening? I mean, my opening repertoire, especially in classical, it's very, what's the best word? Very versatile. It can be very random too. So I usually, like when I play a over the board FIDE tournament, Every single opponent I prepare for, like I find their games and I base what opening I play off of their opening repertoire, at least the games that I can find online. So I really mix it up when it comes to uh, openings in like classical chess. Normally I'll try and avoid like certain lines. Like I not super fond of going into King's Indian as white or like some super theoretical like close or um, open Sicilians like Knight or if I usually just stay away from do you still play football aka soccer <laughs> Yeah, um, I haven't played soccer in a while. We call it soccer in America, but I know everyone in Europe calls it football. I went through a phase of like soccer freestyle or keepy uppy, whatever you prefer to call it. 
Can you gambit all games and win over the board? Um, I mean, the last round in Vegas, I played some crazy gambit on accident because I, I messed up my crap. And it turned into just a crazy, crazy game. Do you train on other accounts online so that people can't prepare against you? I do have a few anonymous accounts. I don't use them too often, though. Because um, a lot of what I play online doesn't necessarily reflect what I play over the board. There's some overlap, but a lot of what I play online can also mislead people into preparing the wrong thing for over the board chess. Yeah, I'll have to make it back to Montreal someday. I was in Toronto less than a year ago for the Chess.com Global Championships. Do you like math? I liked math when I was younger. Also, there was a point I was set to major in math and beer science, but then I pivoted. What is your favorite study technique when learning new strats and knowledge? That's an interesting question. I enjoy, um, like usually if I'm going to study chess on my own, I enjoy playing just a handful of blitz games and then reviewing every single game and just looking for improvements or new ideas. A lot of it is opening based where I'll use whatever openings I encounter online as a kind of basis for kind of building out my repertoire. And basically with every single game I play online, there's always like new lines to try and learn better and discover. You don't play Stafford OTB, Sag. <laughs> I was ready to play the Stafford in uh, the Kragero tournament in Norway against one of my opponents. So I was playing like a 70 year old FM who I like, I, I was presuming would not have been so prepped against the Stafford, but sadly he, he avoided it. He played knight C3 on move three. What does a normal day to day look like for you? I love the streams. Every day is different for me. Um, I had like a lot of travel recently with the tournament in Vegas and then the chess festival. So recently I've been recuperating, trying to get on a routine of like eating well, sleeping well. I have a, a 60 plus day streak of walking 10,000 steps a day. So Take a lot of walks, try and stay active. I remember you played your Karo Khan prep against someone who had watched your videos and prepared for the line. Yeah, yeah, there, there is a game I played in Norway. It was against Twitch viewer Jaxter the Pro. It was like, I think 2300 feet a. And he was like super well prepared and he was crushing me out of the opening, the black side of the Karo Khan. Are you still grinding Kung Fu slash duck chess? Uh, sometimes. Play, variants, duck chess, play. Where is my duck scene? Duck. Here's my duck scene. It might take a long time to find an opponent for duck chess, but I guess whoever like logs in and starts a three, two game, you can try and get a match. Any interest in risk collab with Jonathan? 
I've never played Risk before. Maybe at some point. I've never played online before. Maybe you've played once or twice over the board. Oh, let me change the stream title. Thank you, Josh. Duck. Okay. Oh, playing obese race. Okay, how does a duck move again? It's been so long. I haven't played duck chess in a significant amount of time. So for those that maybe have never seen duck chess or forgot how this works, it's chess with a duck. And what the point, or the way it works is it's normal chess. Every move you make a normal move. But then in addition to every move, you move the duck to a, a new empty square. And the duck is a blocker. It can't be captured. It can't move through it. It just gets in the way of things. So I want to win back the pawn next move. What's duck chess? I hope the explanation I gave is suitable enough. <laughs> oh, that's a good move. It's a very good move. Wow. Hmm. Wait, now I'm I'm perplexed. Let's play F four and again this. I wanted to go for the smother duck mate. I feel like Obese Reese has learned from previous experience. You always have to move the duck. Yeah, I would have liked to um, play this and keep the duck here, but there are situations where you have to move the duck, and sometimes it's a little bit sad. I play this, and then this. So I'm preventing g6. I'm also making it so black has to move the duck next turn. So there's, there's potential danger for black with the king aligned with the queen. The duck is basically pinned to the king. It's very tricky. We might see this move, check. But then I can probably play c3. Yeah, this is super tricky. Bishop e7. All right, let's take. It was an interesting way of defending. The duck is still pinned to the king, which means, I mean, black would like to take back and block the fifth rank, but that wouldn't work because then I win the king. So basically I win the pawn back. How did title Tuesday end? Um, I finished with six and a half out of 11. I lost to a fellow Eric, which was kind of sad, but it happened. Let's play this. I have a cool idea. The reason for playing duck here, actually, we'll see very shortly. Maybe I should have played duck f6 to attack the pawn. Yeah, I wanted to play knight c7 and duck back to d6. But that's not happening. So let's develop. Just realizing my queen is almost trapped. Like here in duck f4. I mean, I'll have queen c7 in that line. Or here I have queen f4. This is actually a high quality duck game so far. Play this and then this. 
preventing king h8. Just trying to keep the king as a target. What's the deal with the duck? <laughs> the duck is just another tool to use. It's a shared creature. So with every turn, every turn is two steps. You make a normal chess move, you move the duck. And it just gets in the way. So now the queen can't retreat, the queen's attacked, the king's also attacked. Black saves both things and attacks my bishop. Now I have this move. And then this move. I think the queen is officially trapped. And I'm still attacking the king. Okay. Yeah, that was very quactical. All right, let's go for the mate. This and this. No, oh, let's not hang a queen. Uh, let's play this and this. Getting closer. Oh, it's Mother Duck Mate. I put the duck on g8 so the king has no escape. Do I torment the black king? I mean, there's still no escape. <laughs> yeah, the game ends with capturing the king. All right, put black out of their suffering. Hey, I gained some points. What's my world ranking in duck chess? I'm not sure if it says actually. Let's say meters. Wow, 2,600. My rating is like provisional. I would be number four on the list. Oh, people can't even see. Sorry about that. Uh, I Yeah, this is a different interface than the other... <laughs> like live chess or chess.com slash play. Uh, there we go. You can see the rating list here. My duck rating is 2316. Oops. Wait, what did I do? Ah. Wait, how long was I muted for? I think I was fixing the lab and like did a few undos. Sorry about that. Okay. The entire stream, yeah. <laughs> Two weeks ago when I streamed Title Tuesday, I uh I play the full game, not muted, but I play the full game without actually showing the game. I was showing the view outside the window. Okay. Sending the raid to Danya. Still grinding some fast chess. He's 4 0 against Bordnik right now. Wow, he's, he's 33 24 bullets. That's insane. So send some energy and I'll be back soon. Thanks again and goodbye. No, oh, thank you, Jimster. Stafford rules. Let's go. On that note.
Stafford rules.